Um, my name is Paige and I'm an admissions counselor here at Wright State. Um, so I work with students every day to help them um, get connected with these folks that we have um, on our chat tonight. So we are going to send it over to Cindy and Shimon and they are going to kind of work through what they do as a team to help students decide on a major. Uh, my name is Cindy Garman. I am a career advisor at Wright State and Shimon Green is your academic advisor here at Wright State. And we're going to cover some of the services that we do in both sections for you. So I wanted to um, just, first of all, when you come into our office to meet with us, we're not gonna sit down and just start talking about what you have to do. We really wanna get to know you. We wanna know what you like to do for fun, where your passions lie, things that you excel in. We want to know what your accomplishments are um, and what majors you have explored or maybe haven't thought of. And then how are you preparing for college? Along that end, I'm sure that you have post-it notes and choices and ideas everywhere that are asking all these questions, that you don't have an idea of what you want to do or where you want to be. You don't know what your interests are. You don't have any idea where to turn. That's where we're here to help. Um, both your academic advisors and your career advisors for undecided and exploratory students will help you find those passions and the things that you like to do so that you can kind of narrow it down to see where you want to be. The exploratory advising team um, will help you explore different majors, review degree requirements, create academic success plans, which are extremely important to help you stay on track, but they'll also help you work with us to explore a research, research plan to help you look at different careers. And we'll provide you with support your entire time while you're going to Wright State. We also, they will also help you assist with, um, give you assistance accessing different resources at Wright State. For the career advising side of it, we will work with you to help provide an individualized um, plan to choose something that is unique to you. So that when you're going to school and you finally decide on a, a major, it's gonna be something that's of interest to you, that meets your passions, your interests, your likes, your dislikes, all of that. We also assist with resume and cover letters, provide interview techniques. We have a website called Handshake that will that you can go into and search for positions. We will teach you job search strategies, social media, salary negotiations, and more. Additionally, we've added what is called a Right Life Pilot page, which we're really proud of because it's career services in one-stop shop. So everything that you need to find related to your career and your career path will be there. So what we want you to know is that while you're navigating a path through Wright State in the four years that you're here, you are not doing this by yourself. We're going to be there, all of us, faculty, career advisors, um, academic advisors, and more are here to help you with your lifelong learning. We'll help you navigate and develop skills and connect with people to make that possible. Um, for my story, I actually started off in healthcare. I had a degree in healthcare. I actually taught medical assisting and was the medical program director. And then I, at the time, I was the only one on campus that really liked computers. So I don't even want to tell you how long ago that was, but I liked computers. And so they made me the computer guru, which kind of led me into business programs. And then I was promoted to director of career development for all programs. That led me to a totally different degree. And I ended up getting a bachelor's and an MBA focused on human resource management in career development. And then I ended up working in higher ed for more than 30 years. So from healthcare to business, it's not always a straight road, but you do find what you like to do. If you look at Shimon's side, 
Um, she tried first to go for a biology major. I think she really wanted to do something in veterinarian school. Yes, I did. I really <laughs> wanted to say, <save. laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was in high school. I wanted to save all the puppies and kitties. Um, mm -hmm. I came to Wright State in 1999 as a student, took my first biology class and failed took my second biology class and failed. And that's when I had to make a decision that maybe biology wasn't for me. And also I couldn't imagine having to cut open all the puppies and kitties. So I took a lot of classes that were based on my interest. And then I met with a great academic advisor, um, Dr. Gooden, who's still here. He is in psychology at Wright State. And he sat down with me, went over the requirements for psychology, and I found my passion. I excelled in my psychology courses. And I admit, I was a fifth year senior, and I graduated with my Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology. And that's when I got the idea that I wanted to be an academic advisor because I wanted to help other students who were exploring or didn't know what they wanted to do. I did our student affairs and higher education program here at Wright State, where not only I learned about academic advising, but also learned about all parts of the university from academic and student affairs. I earned my master's degree and student coming up this year. I've been in academic advising for 14 years at Wright State. I've worked with almost every major at Wright State. Um, I work in our transfer center, so I love working with our transfer students. And now I work specifically with undecided and college credit plus students. So I have a very um, big passion for working with students who are exploring their majors, because that's a big thing at Wright State. We just want to make sure that you know that coming in, being exploratory is awesome. That's why we like to use the term exploratory. None of you are undecided. You have decided mm -hmm. to come to Wright State you've decided to pursue a degree. Right now you're exploring your major and exploring your career, and you're gonna have all the support here at Wright State to do that. Thank you, Shimon. And to add to that, I can't tell you how many students come in saying they know their major, both like Shimon and I, and then change it. So they are also exploring majors. They're just doing it in a little different process. To that end, we have a Wright State graduate from 2019, Clarissa Myers, and she actually is pursuing her PhD in physics. But she had planned on being a high school teacher and actually started at Wright State with a chemistry major before she changed to physics. So you never know where life's going to take you. It could be just a single class that all of a sudden this little light bulb goes off inside and then you go, that's it, that's what I wanna do. So we also wanna reach out to the parents um, because you're a part of this. We want you to listen to, your, uh, to the students, you, to your kids and be open to their ideas and then help them find information. There's a lot of information to look at. So you wanna be there to help them plan this career that they're going to do for a very long time. There's more ways that you can help. You can encourage your, uh, your son or daughter to meet with both their academic and career advisors. Um, we are here to help every step of the way. Encourage your students to, uh, the student to discuss courses they are taking and why they chose them. Advise them to write a resume. I say write a resume as soon as you get in and keep adding to it. Encourage class uh, campus involvement outside the classroom. We have a, a career plan for first, second, third, fourth year, and then we even take it all the way to retirement. So your career is always going forward and it's up to you to see that you keep it that way. And then I can't emphasize the importance of an internship. It is actually an entry level job by today's employers and is almost a must. Some commonly asked questions. Now jump in here, Cindy. Um, okay. For students, you're probably wondering when do you choose your academic major? So students, please don't panic at all. Um, as your academic advisor, we really want to encourage you to try to have your major chosen by the end of your first year because one of the biggest goals is we want you to stay on track with your degree at Wright State. 
And even if at the end of that first year, you still feel exploratory, that's okay, because we can look at our different minors and certificates that you can add along the way. And also another big question that we have are the type of classes that you would take as an exploratory student. All of our degree programs here at Rice State require you to take general education courses. These courses include things like communications, history, social science, um, arts and humanities, cultural courses, and those are a requirement no matter what degree you choose at Rice State. So those are the courses that we will focus on at first. But again, you're allowed to explore and you're allowed to take other courses. You can look at a foreign language or look at courses of interest. So please do not panic at all being exploratory at Wright State. Um, for academic advising, when we wanna meet with you, we wanna meet with you as soon as possible and as many times as possible. So the goal would be with your academic advisor, we wanna see you by the third week of the semester. We wanna check in and make sure everything's going okay. If you started doing some type of research or you're majoring your career, start that research plan and also discuss any type of academic success resources that you would like. Like if you would like to use like our tutoring, um, our writing center and math learning center. After that, we want to see you before it's time to register. And we also want to check in with you during finals, but know with academic advising, we're always available at any time for email and appointments. Shimon. This is my academic advising team. Um, again, I'm Shimon Green. I'm the assistant director for exploratory academic advising. And if you did the College Credit Plus program at Wright State, you may have spoken with our office as well. I also have an academic advisor on my team, Mr. Keith Douglas. He'll be working with one of us when you come to Wright State and you are exploratory. And again, I'm Cindy Garman. I'm a uh, career advisor for exploratory first year um, CCP nursing and alumni. And then there is Marie Ann Mary Ann Weiss, career advisor, exploratory first year students and the same. We want to meet with you. We want to meet you whether it's WebEx, email, phone call. We wanna meet with you as many times as you'd like to help you find your path at Wright State. Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Bevelheimer and I'm the Director of Enrollment Management in the Rogers Sewing College of Business. I'm gonna give you a uh, brief overview of the college and I'm gonna start by telling you about our AACSB accreditation. Uh, the Rogers Sewing College of Business is accredited by AACSB and that's the highest accreditation you can have for a business school, which puts us in the top 5% of business schools worldwide. We are also one of, 100, or one of 219 schools who also have individual accounting accreditation by AACSB. We were the first uh, MIS program in Ohio to be ABET accredited. And we also have been recognized as a best online business program by US News and World Report and a best business school by the Princeton Review. We have 11 different majors that you can choose from. You can see on the uh, screen here, three of our majors have a business analytics concentration available, and those include finance, management information systems, and marketing. And if you're interested in finding out more about uh, one or more of our majors, you can um, find information on our website, including a description of each major, and uh, careers that you can go into and also companies that hire our graduates. So I'd recommend that you take a look at that and explore a little bit more um, the different majors that we do have available. We also have quite a few minors and certificate programs. We have uh, eight different minors and three certificate programs. And our motto in the college is that everybody needs a little business. So regardless of the major that you end up pursuing eventually, uh, I would encourage you to think about doing a minor in business and selecting one of our minors or uh, maybe one of our certificate programs. Our minors are only 18 hours each and our certificates are only 12 hours. So it's something that you might be able to fit in um, in some elective categories if you decide to major in something other than business. Um, the reason we recommend that is 
because no matter what you end up going into, you're probably going to be working for a business eventually, so it's good to have some business background before you get into the workforce. Uh, we offer multiple ways that are, uh, you can get real-world experience while you're at Wright State and in the college, and these include our Sewing Trading Center, our Ray Ray Cafe, and our Dave Lab. Our Sewing Trading Center allows you, um, it, it basically simulates a real New York trading floor. And in the lab, in our trading center, you have access to the same software that real traders have. We also have a class that you can take called Real Money Investing, where the students um, manage a portfolio of real university money, which is worth about $1.8 million right now. Our Ray Ray Cafe is an entrepreneurship opportunity um, where you can lead a real business. It's run by students for students. So the students that are um, running our Ray Ray Cafe manage everything from the daily operations of the cafe to the human resource tasks to marketing the cafe. And one of the best things about the cafe is that all of the proceeds go toward um, student scholarships. So it goes toward scholarships for students like you. Our Dave Lab, uh, which stands for Data Analytics and Visualization Environment, is a way for you to um, explore big data and data visualization. So you have the opportunity to get real analytics experience um, by partnering with our business partners that we have and working under the supervision of faculty members. So these are just three of the ways that you can get some real world experience in our college, and we have uh, many others. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the student support services that we have in our college. We have a very student-centered faculty, so they not only are there to support you in the classes that you're taking, but also um, they're there to help you network with potential employers. Um, I know you heard from the student success team. Uh, we do have academic advisors, so you'll be assigned an academic advisor when you start at Wright State that will help you um, navigate your course requirements and help you plan your classes each semester. We have tutoring for all of our introductory 2000 level business classes. We also offer um, a class business 1000 career and business opportunities where if you're undecided about the major that you might want to go into in business, you can learn about all of the majors that we offer by taking this one credit hour class. We also have a peer mentor program that will pair you with a junior or senior in our college um, to help you navigate that first year that you're at Wright State. One of the things you um, want to make sure that you do when you're at Wright State is take advantage of all of the extracurricular activities that we have available. We have many um, activities and clubs that you can get involved in in the college, and um, these are a great way to network and meet new friends and all of the people at Wright State. In addition to, um, it's a great addition to your resume when you get ready to graduate to put all of the things you've been involved in on your resume. So one of the things that I recommend to students most is not to wait until you graduate to take advantage of all the career management um, services that we have in our college. We have a career consultant that will help you with all aspects of career management, including career advising, uh, reminding you of different networking events that you can take advantage of, helping you find an internship, and also job placement um, when you get ready to find that full-time job. So I recommend um, that you connect with our career consultant your first or second semester when you're at Wright State so you can start exploring all the different um, opportunities we have as far as career management in our college. So that's everything I had for my presentation. If um, I'll be available at the end if you have any questions related to business. Thanks, Joanne. All right. Hello, my name is Bethany DeLong. And Very excited to be talking to this group because, of course, now I have to share my story. I was also um, what you would call an exploratory student and can't 
really, I don't think I could tell you how many times I have changed a major um, over the course of my college career. So I could definitely identify um, with just finding that right fit for you. And it does take some time. So don't feel that pressure to pick something right away. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes giving a brief overview about the College of Education and Human Services and the different majors and programs that we offer. So our vision, I think this really kind of sums up who we are, just kind of our culture, but also our different majors that we offer. We're an influential force in Ohio and beyond for preparing high quality professionals who are change agents in society. So as I talk briefly about all of our majors, you will see that they are all very diverse, but that culminating factor really is that they're focused on people and making an impact. So if that's a passion of yours is I always hear like, I don't know exactly what I wanna do, but I would like to work with people. So this, any of our majors can really kind of be a, that great connection of working with individuals. So who we are, we have four different departments within our college. We have teacher education, kinesiology and health, human services and leadership studies. I'm going to start with our pathways to teaching at Wright State. On your screen, you'll see all of our different programs um, that lead to not only a bachelor's degree, but also a teaching license. Um, some of our programs, which I will kind of make a side note of, they, they do, I want to make sure, can you guys hear me okay? Breaking up. Yeah, it's going in and out, but we can hear you pretty well for the most part. Okay. I didn't realize how distracting those little pop-up chats are. Um, so just shout out again if, if you can't hear me. But um, back to our pathways to education and that teaching license. On your screen, you will see all of our different majors. And you will not only earn that bachelor's degree, but also your teaching license. We do offer intervention specialist, which is a mild to moderate license. Um, and that takes you from kindergarten to grade 12. Intervention specialist is also known as special education, probably the more common term. We also have elementary education, which prepares you to teach preschool to grade five. Middle childhood, which is grades four through nine. Adolescent to young adult education, which is grades seven through 12. And multi-age education, which is preschool to grade 12. And last but not least, health and physical education, which is also preschool to grade 12. So the two programs that are a little bit different are our adolescent to young adult, as well as our multi-age education. Um, you would actually be majoring in your content area. So if you want to teach English, you would be teach or you would be majoring in English with a concentration in integrated language arts. If you wanted to teach Spanish, you would be majoring in Spanish, but then working with the College of Education to make sure you're taking the correct classes to earn that teaching license. Um, I really love this pairing because for our students who are very passionate about their content area, they're going to be able to major um, in that content area and really dive deep into those courses. So some of the things that we are really proud of when it comes to those teacher preparation programs, we offer early and frequent supervised field experiences. And we get you out there into the classrooms, into the K through 12 classrooms early. And that is as early as your first year. Um, for me, I thought I wanted to be a teacher. And as I did those field experiences, I realized maybe that's not the kind of teaching that I wanted to do. Um, so that can be a great kind of way to test the waters and see if that's right for you. Um, our students, after they graduate, they're seeing anywhere from 200 to 685 contact hours in the classroom with students. And it really just depends which program they're doing as far as which hour mark they're at there. We also have a year-long student teaching placement requirement. That's different than what other universities um, require. Typically, they're only in student teaching for one semester. That year-long experience is unique because you're going to get to see the classroom at the start of the school year in August all the way to the end of the year um, in May or June. So obviously, classrooms are very different from the beginning of the end of the year. Um, great relationships to build with not only your students, but then also those mentoring teachers in the classrooms. We boast a 96% pass rate on state licensure exams. And we also have nine formal partner districts throughout our Office of Partnerships and Field Experiences. 
High need areas in terms of teaching include special education, math, science, world language, and teaching English as a second language. Those are the areas of highest need, but I will say there's just a teacher shortage in general in the state of Ohio as well as nationally. So if, if teaching is something that you think you're interested in, um, there is definitely a need. All right, so our additional College of Education and Human Services majors are now on your screen. This is everything outside of teaching and everything outside of um, every, that will lead to a teaching license. So in kinesiology and health, we have sports science. This program really focuses on health and wellness and the effects of exercise on the human body. So a lot of our students want to be personal trainers. They want to go on to physical therapy school, maybe do something like cardiac rehab. Public health education, even though it has the word education in the title, it's not a traditional A through 12 teaching type of job or field. Um, this is more so about educating the public on health issues. Um, so especially with everything we have going on, I think we'll really see a rise in the need for public health education. In human services, we have rehabilitation services. I typically like to compare this to something like social work but you don't have, you will not end up with a license for social work. But if you're one of those people that thinks I, I want to help and I want to work with people, this is a great major because you can really focus on working with those populations that you're most passionate about. So if you want to work with veterans, people with disabilities, the homeless or an adoption agency, rehabilitation services can be a great connection to some of those career opportunities. Our sign language interpreting is a little bit different in that you do have to have an associate's degree. Um, and we do have several community colleges in the area that can be a great connection to them. Finally, in our leadership department, we have a major called organizational leadership. This is really more the human side um, of the business world. So really focusing on managing people and helping develop leaders. So some other things that we're really proud of um, in terms of these programs is that all of our majors require a practicum and or an internship. So our students are gaining several hours out in the field, um, putting their content into practice and then also developing those relationships with professionals. Those programs all also have flexible curriculum. So if you want to add a minor, whether that's in our college or maybe something from business that Joanne had mentioned um, or anywhere across the university, you can add a minor or you can take elective courses um, that are just areas of interest to you. I like to use the term umbrella degrees a lot, which means there's not one career or one job, one pathway that these majors can provide, which I think is someone like myself who wasn't really sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. I liked that comfort of knowing I'm not tied into one thing. If I'm passionate about health and fitness, sports science is going to provide me a lot of opportunities example. Um, and these are all also high demand career areas. I think especially as we see a more health focused and hopefully more public health focused um, just society, I think we'll see a lot of those areas grow. Um, and I also would like to mention that our organizational leadership program is fully offered online and that has always been offered online. All right, so that is everything that I have to share with you. Hey, um, so I guess I'd like to start with just saying um, five minutes is barely enough time to scratch the surface uh, of all the programs available in any of these colleges. If you hear something that sounds like a potential good fit uh, for you, please reach out to us, me for engineering, uh, or one of the advisors for more information. So I'd just like to take a moment to talk about what engineering is because there's sometimes some confusion regarding that. Um, if science asks why does the universe work this way? Uh, then engineering, I think, uses our current understanding of those answers to improve the human condition. That's what engineering is all about to me. Uh, it can be both transformational and incremental, which is to say it can be something that completely changes how things are done. For example, going from a horse-driven economy to a motor-power-driven economy, or it can be incremental, going from one automobile type to another. Over time, even incremental changes become transformational. We now have um, motor vehicles that don't use gasoline, don't have motors, um, run batteries, and can drive themselves, right? So these small changes are essentially a big part of what day-to-day -day engineering is all about. 
engineers study um, not the scientific method, but the methods of design, fabrication, power, materials, sensors, data analysis, essentially how to use our understanding of science to create um, new solutions to um, problems that, uh, that humans have. Um, so um, though the, the impact of engineering uh, really spans all other disciplines, um, which is one of the reasons why I strongly recommend that anyone who's an engineer uh, get a minor in a different field, perhaps business, perhaps a liberal art, um, really anything. Where are you going to apply engineering? Which problems are you most interested in solving? Uh, engineers work best when they have a broad view of the world. It shouldn't just be about um, becoming an engineer and focusing only on engineering coursework. Um, but really, any, uh, any field of human endeavor has some engineering aspect to it today. We offer 10 undergraduate programs in the College of Engineering and Computer Science at Wright State, and they're staffed by about 80 faculty members. Um, the programs uh, range from our engineering programs. Um, I'm going to just talk about them briefly here um, uh, to our, what I would consider more engineering adjacent or computing uh, related degrees. So the six engineering degrees that we have um, are biomedical engineering, which really focuses on how engineering can uh, kind of impact um, human health and uh, pacemakers, artificial limbs, uh, sensors that are worn in or on the body, um, medicines that you take and track information, uh, data related to medicine, industrial and systems engineering uh, that deals with uh, robotic systems for manufacturing um, and logistics processes, um, how you can keep track of the information from Amazon to make sure everything shows up at the right time. Anything that's a information-based process, how does that workflow work? Uh, computer engineering largely deals with the processing of, of signals with computer hardware, sending information or getting information and then processing it quickly with specific hardware to do it locally on site. Um, mechanical engineering and material sciences engineering really deals with the construction of devices, uh, not just devices that have gears and pulleys, um, but devices nowadays that are nanomaterials, uh, composites, ceramics, how do you make better batteries, how can you can um, help move forward the green energy movement uh, and, um, and so forth. And electrical engineering, of course, like computer engineering, is really focused on the transmission of power and information because all information is transmitted through the ether now. Um, how do radio waves work? How, do, how does radar work, LIDAR? How can we use all this information uh, around us um, to kind of sense what the world um, is telling us um, and uh, further our communication? Uh, in the computing related degrees, we have um, really four programs at the undergraduate level. Electrical and computer engineering technology deals with the, um, the use of computing devices and the use of established solutions on existing problems. Um, it's slightly less math and science focus than a traditional electrical or computer engineering degree. Uh, the computer science degrees, we have got two, a uh, Bachelor of Science um, and a Bachelor of Arts. They differ from each other primarily by the focus on engineering and science, but they both deal with the use of computers to solve um, data-related problems. And a BS in information technology and cyber systems, which really deals with how we can um, defend the infrastructure of the nation from a cyber attack and how we can maintain high fidelity information in any processes that we have. Um, again, these are liberal arts degrees. More than half of the classes that you will take as an engineer are non-engineering classes, and um, that's some of the most important things for engineers to learn. Um, although our programs share a focus on the fundamentals of science and math, um, Engineering processes are all about creating systems, um, creating them, analyzing them, improving them. That requires working in large teams, which means communication, critical thinking, um, being able to work with businesses. These are all importantly about important value skills, important skills of great value in engineering. Um, likewise, all our engineering programs are really a blend of practical and theoretical work. So um, you don't take very many classes that are just read a book and solve some problems. It's not like a math class in, uh, in a typical high school. 
um, you need to be in the lab, you need to build things in order to be a practicing engineer. Uh, we do a good enough job at that, that uh, we have a um, outstanding set of community partners with long relationships with our programs and our graduates. Uh, they know the quality of our students, uh, where those students can fit immediately into their workplaces. So we generally have uh, more local demand for students to fill entry level and internship positions than we can produce graduates. Um, our staff in our Career Development Center help students find a good fit for that uh, important first paid internship. And uh, I think it's fair to say that most of our students uh, who are interested in internships um, are able to use that money uh, to help pay for their college expenses, which significantly reduces their debt. Uh, most can pay back their debt, uh, entire college debt, with just a, within a few years, um, in part, again, due to the high number of offerings compared to number of graduates. Uh, even in the Miami Valley, the starting salaries for engineers um, is quite reasonable. And for those who um, wish to move to the coast, of course, the uh, pay increases significantly. Um, I also like to share that um, we have really focused on trying to get to just the right size. Um, the College of Engineering Computer Science is big enough to have extensive facilities to practice and research engineering. We offer a complete set of master's degrees and PhDs um, leading from all of our engineering disciplines. We're accredited at the highest level that engineering can be accredited in the uh, nation and the world. Um, we're big enough to have engineering Greek life, social clubs, competition teams, and other activities normally found at the largest institutions. But we aren't so big that our professors are entirely focused on their research and their graduate students. Um, our faculty get to work directly with our undergraduates from day one to graduation. Uh, we get to know you so that we can better meet you where you are and provide you with the scaffolding that will best help you to succeed. Uh, that's why I came to Rice University, and that's why I think you will find it equally amazing. Again, if you have any questions regarding engineering, please feel free to send an email to any of the advisors or to me, uh, travis.doom at right.edu. Thank you. Hello, I'm Carol LaRanger, the Associate Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, and uh, welcome to this presentation for um, exploring uh, uh, students. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the College of Liberal Arts, and I want to begin by explaining the word liberal or the term liberal arts, because there's often some confusion about that. Um, the 8th century Greeks, 8th century BC, so a long time ago, were first coined the term liberal arts. And by that, they meant those studies and skills that were considered essential for free persons to participate in civic life. And um, so, you know, pretty essential stuff. Um, and we pride ourselves on still giving you those skills that will allow you to participate in all facets of civic life um, and professional life. In fact, even if you choose not to major in the liberal arts, you will be taking courses in the liberal arts as part of your general education because every discipline, every college here recognizes the important fundamental that the liberal arts provide. We have um, a little bit about the college. We're the, one of the largest colleges at Wright State. Um, we have so many majors that we have to divide them into four larger categories just to be able to keep track of them. Um, we have programs in the social sciences, humanities, fine and performing arts, and in interdisciplinary studies. So about 40 undergraduate majors, 37 minors, and 11 certificate programs, including uh, one certificate program that's my favorite in career advancement skills one and two. So no matter what your major is, these courses will give you those communication and uh, uh, multicultural awareness skills that will allow you to excel wherever you go. And they're, the certificates are tailored to match what area employers say that they like to see in their employees. We also have a number of, of centers um, of excellence, uh, including CELIA, the Collaborative Education Leadership and Innovation in the Arts Center, um, the New Media Incubator, where students can get their hands on um, telecommunications technology, um, and LEAP, our intensive English program, and our 
Robert and Elaine Stein galleries. So just briefly, I'm not going to talk about all of our majors, but the way to think about the liberal arts, those essential skills, is that everything we do is concerned with the study of how humankind interacts with its world. So one division, the humanities, I've listed the uh, majors here, is focused on understanding how humanity has understood and described its experience of the world to itself, how it has kept records um, and transmitted those on. Uh, the social sciences are concerned with the study of how people interact in groups. And I guarantee you that the last three months um, in this country uh, are going to give uh, social scientists a lot of fodder for studying. How have we organized ourselves and how have we lived uh, uh, and developed our um, structures of being uh, in the face of pandemic? Interdisciplinary programs draw from all the liberal arts fields to try to understand, uh, to apply all of those ways of learning and knowing to uh, contemporary studies and contemporary situations. And then finally, the fine and performing arts, those um, uh, activities wherein humans uh, uh, express themselves creatively about the human experience. Um, and we're very proud of, of all of our disciplines, but particularly noteworthy, I think, in, in the College of Liberal Arts is our theater, dance, and motion pictures program. So the liberal arts, those essential skills I was telling you about, um, will uh, give you the opportunity to develop creative and innovative thinking uh, habits to um, help you solve pressing problems, um, adapt quickly to uh, the ever-changing world, and, and learn quickly what you need to know in order to function well uh, in a situation that maybe no one imagined um, previously to encountering it. Communicate clearly and effectively, both in writing and in speech, and in via technologies. Um, uh, research and analyze data. Again, be flexible, um, work in teams, and understand other points of view. So all of those skills are necessary for uh, functioning as a, as a free individual in contemporary society. As with the other uh, colleges at Wright State, we've made a commitment to student success um, through student engagement. We have um, uh, lots of clubs and organizations to support students' interests um, and to just have fun and socialize, which is an important part of any edu education. Lots and lots of extracurricular lectures, performances, and events. Um, and we've made a commitment in recent years to hands-on and experiential learning so that, that every major, um, students in every major can come away from their program with um, some real-world experience, ways to apply uh, seemingly esoteric disciplines such as philosophy or classics to real-world um, uh, uh, problems and, and, um, and activities. We have a strong academic advising team, professional advisors um, who are available um, by appointment and drop-in to help make sense of your programs of study. We have faculty mentors in every uh, major to work with students as they, as they come towards the, the conclusion of their studies in their last uh, two or three years. And we have a, probably one of the most energetic workforce and career consultants in the university, Mr. Wayne Stark who gives personalized career advising, um, provides uh, uh, lectures and seminars on negotiating for, for uh, salaries, making the most of a liberal arts um, background for the purpose of building a strong resume. Um, he brings in alumni who are working all over the region to help our students uh, prepare themselves for careers. Uh, we'll skip over that in the interest of time. We just completed a survey of our uh, alumni um, and who have reported that their liberal arts education provided them with skills to support them in their careers and personal goals to the tune of 88% of the respondents saying that this has been the case. Um, very good feedback, I think, in terms of uh, their educations, giving them the skills they need to function in an increasingly complex and changing world. Um, we have uh, students working all over the valley and all over the country 
for um, companies you've likely heard of, applying their skills, um, information or some examples there. And of course, I'm happy to put you in touch with an advisor or a program director or department chair in an area of your interest if you simply email me at um, tola at right.edu. So in the College of Science and Math, you hear uh, we do support a lot of other programs as well across the campus. Um, but then we also have um, 19 undergraduate majors uh, within our college and many minors as well. So uh, like uh, the College of Liberal Arts, we group them into, I call them career families. So we've got three career families um, for the majors. Let's see if I can get it to go here. There we go. Um, so we have biomedical and behavioral sciences, environmental sciences, and quantitative sciences. Uh, the biomedical and the behavioral sciences, those are the areas, uh, the majors that most students who want to go on to medical school or um, become a, a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist, um, th they often go into those areas. Environmental sciences are very you know, interested in climate change, how the um, current sciences and how the world impacts our environment. Um, so you'll see several majors and you'll see some majors that are listed multiple places because we have different focuses, uh, chemistry, biological science, physics. Uh, those have multiple um, focus and career opportunities that come out of them. So we have ecology and biological sciences, as well as more of the uh, organismic uh, sciences within the biology. Uh, so depending on if you want to do which way you want to go, you can definitely create your pathway in that regard. And finally, we have quantitative sciences and just understanding uh, computing power and uh, you know math, statistics, physics, uh, understanding you know how to quantify things and um, kind of the, the computational power and then the physics with networking and some of those types of things. All that's based kind of in the mathematics and, and the, again, the quantitative sciences. So a few that I'll kind of highlight within here, uh, obviously the statistics, uh, we have a actuarial science program that's fairly new. Um, if you're not familiar with actuarial science, uh, an actuarial scientist is those who set um, and assess risk. So they look at statistics. Uh, they're the ones who more often than not will set insurance rates and uh, they work in many corporations outside of that to uh, simply assess risk areas. So uh, that's kind of a neat and a growing field. A lot of opportunities there. Public health, you've heard a lot about public health recently uh, over the last couple months. Um, so that's a, definitely a growing area as well. If you're interested in uh, going on to become a medical uh, provider or a healthcare provider, we also offer uh, a program specifically for those students. And regardless if you're in the College of Science and Math or if you're in a different area, I think we have a dance major who is um, also a pre-health major. Uh, so wanting to go on to uh, medical school. So we offer a program um, and a um, individual who coordinates working with students who are interested in that. And he'll work with you to make sure your applications are up to par, make sure you're getting everything that's needed to create a good portfolio of skills and abilities um, once you graduate and once you get to that application to be a strong applicant for med school. So if you're interested in any of these health areas, um, you can definitely reach out to um, our pre-health advisor and uh, it's just a, he's a secondary advisor to help you get to that ultimate career goal. So that's a great program within COSM as well. And as many others have talked about, we also emphasize experiential learning and research, uh, internships. Um, so we have a program called Applying Scientific Knowledge, uh, and uh, we call it the ASK program for undergraduate research, where we actually pay, we have some scholarship funds for students to get into some of the research labs on campus as an undergrad. Sometimes if you're coming in with some CCP or AP credit, sometimes you can get into those labs as early as your freshman year and begin building a research portfolio. We also work with some off-campus uh, experiences in both labs and with employers. So the Rocking Horse Center is a community 
health agency that does a lot. Uh, we have a lot of psychology majors who work um, and internship through the Rocking Horse Center. Uh, Canary is a uh, one of those risk management. We have several actuarial science uh, majors who uh, internship with with Canary, and then a couple of the local health systems and many um, defense related and uh, organizations that work directly with Wright Pat Air Force Base, including the Air Force Research Lab. So that is a very quick overview. I think that's my last slide. Uh, so I will turn that back over to Paige and we'll go from there. Thank you everyone again um, for um, joining us tonight. We did have one question. And so um, what I would like to do is just pose the question so the rest of the students on the chat will be able to um, kind of get the answer to it. Um, and then as well as I'm gonna share um, my screen that has the admissions contact information. Um, so if you want to share, uh, I'll share again all the contact information for everyone that spoke today. But if you want um, someone to direct your questions to that can refer you to the right people, you can reach out to the admissions. So the question we did have um, was, will being undecided um, extend your degree? Will you still be able to graduate in four years? Um, so, if Shimon, if you want to take that and kind of expand on it, and then if any college has anything to add to it, do that as well. Sure. So, this is one of the biggest questions we get um, besides what classes will I take as an exploratory student. And to be honest, it's going to depend. I think for the most part, for um, a lot of majors, it, it won't impact it to where you would be here for more than four years, but it really depends on the major that you decide to choose to pursue, and then also the classes that you have taken while you're an exploratory student, because some of our degree programs here have specific requirements within our education, um, especially in math and in science. But the great thing is with your academic advisor, um, we have access to a program where we can run what we call degree audits for all of our degree programs here. So we would be able to show you how your classes go towards any of the degrees that you are interested in pursuing at Wright State. So I guess coming from me, it would kind of, it would depend. Um, I definitely would like to hear what the other colleges, how they feel about that question as well. So I'll jump in. Um, being undecided for the first year, I would say uh, won't necessarily impact time to graduation. Most of the fundamental skills are shared or at least elective in uh, most programs. The trick is that many undecided students don't listen to their advisors and just kind of take whatever class. I'm, <laughs> you got to be careful of this. The advisors really understand which classes are the general skills classes that can apply to many different programs. The, uh, the best exploratory classes. And if you don't want to extend your time to graduation and you're undecided, you really really need to depend upon your advisors to help you identify those classes or it will impact you. After your first year, it's really a great idea to have a major selected or at least a minor so you're making progress in one direction or the other. Um, if you don't have your direction kind of nailed down after your first year or if you change, make your mind even worse, you, you make a decision and then you change your mind in that second year, which definitely happens. Um, if that happens, it might it might delay your graduation by a year. But I would say that many of the students who have that experience, and now Shimon had shared that she's a, a five year grad. Um, usually, they change it because along the way they go, "Wow, why didn't anybody tell me that I love this thing that I've never heard of before? I took one class, I enjoyed it. I'm happy to spend another year because now I know what I want to do with the rest of my life." So it's not to be feared; it's to be avoided if possible because it does cost you more. But along the way, if you say, actually, now I know what it is, um, that f five years in the, in the grand scheme of my life will actually be much, much better than the low cost of the, having that fifth year of education. So I know that's a complicated answer. Um, I'll shorten it again. Not necessarily listen to your advisors for that first year in particular. All right. Great advice. I have something to add that 
to that as well. For your career advisors, we will work with you to help you discover things that you like and discover things about yourself that make certain careers more appealing to you just based on interests. Um, a lot of times I'll hear someone come into my classroom when my dad was a doctor and my mom was a nurse, so I'm gonna be one. But what your real interest is, is in making robots or model airplanes, and that's where you really want to be. So what we wanna try and do is help you find your passion. Um, I get up every day and I go to work and I love what I do. And I know that a lot of our faculty are the same way. And that's what you want to do. You want to go to work every day and love what you do because you're gonna be doing it for a very long time. So we hope that we can help guide you. I'm not gonna choose for you, this is your life, but we're gonna help guide you in the right path.